uh, the colonists from out of space have returned to Earth. And this culture lacks the superstition uh, of Orc and Legacy. And they harvest one of the few remaining living powers for flesh and the technology to sell to the other cultures that live in Orc and the uh, But these are not people on the other end of your gun. These are cultures, people who are fighting for and defending. Something we've been trying to add to the game for a long time and finally realized in uh, what is essentially a living relay with all of these people. So let's, let's go in. One, two, last, hurrah! Cabat codes or other customizations for companions, you can come to see this. If you need gross fish heads for some reason, uh, you could come here and proudly display. If you're a Nidus fan, that probably would look great in your orbiter. So in Warframe, you guys have been leveling weapons for years and applying from a set of hundreds of mods, but you never got to make your own weapon from parts. So the Austron at Hawk's Anvil, the Austrons will be presenting a new component-based weapon system for the game. This is the beginning of this system that will have other manifestations. We'll talk about that later on in the show. Uh, every aspect of this weapon, the strike, the hilt, uh, sorry, the strike, the grip, all of these things affect not only the stance that you use when, you, when you're uh, using the weapon, but the way it does crit, the damage types. Uh, and then there's the balance, which has uh, you know special effects and that sort of thing. So Hawk's Anvil is going to be very interesting for you guys. The coolest part, which is very easy but very interesting, is you'll get to name your weapon for a change. And you can see here, Scott's been careful to put in uh, our VIP Tenno, hang out in the relay. You know, I don't know if you snort this or you add it to cooking, but there's some powders back there that are interesting. And then I can hear people talking in the front row. We want to try to make this game feel less of the scenes, of less jumping to the ship and back and jumping to the ship and back. Oh, there's Megan. Megan's going to be playing with it. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, We've got a fellow here who, of course, has a problem that he needs a tenno to solve. Oh, God, tenno! I know that do. Our desolation plant's kinetic motivator has failed. We have many in need of fresh water, need oots. If you would risk a journey across the plains, my clade will make it worth your while. This I swear. Should I do it? Tattoo boots, Tino. Ah, the Grenier have one such motivator at a camp I have marked for you. Borrow it for us, for the children. So Kanzu's got a problem. Uh, of course, these guys are scavengers, and getting uh, water purification is a big problem for them. Uh, so I probably have time to run with Megan. We could probably run a mission. Uh, to, to help out Kanzu, kind of see how he reacts. 
but, oh, hey, Meg. Thanks for coming. She's got a crazy, colorful mouse there. That's really cool. Uh, oh, yeah, very good. Yeah, very good, of course. Um, however, I think what would be much more interesting is if we didn't have to return to our ship. That was very anticlimactic. Uh, uh, I mean, is there a whole bunch of these? Should I open it? Thank you for that. I just unclenched. This is the Plains of Eidolon. This is, while we were walking from the relay, we streamed in three kilometer square space of gameplay for you guys to experience. Uh, caves and hidden camps, things to explore, a sense of freedom that we've never seen in Warframe before. That mountain behind there is, is a gameplay space. It isn't a backdrop. That, that Grenier building is an outpost that looks down upon a, a dig Grenier site. Patrol. They have been building temporary encampments here, excavating for artifacts of the old world. Take them out. <laughs> don't die, Rebecca, don't die. <laughs> You guys have been used to running missions like a rat in a maze, and this These is completely different. Kill those birds. And killing birds, killing birds. double plus good. You do not want to be out here at night. This is an ancient battlefield where the sentients tried to destroy this Orkin Tower and failed and died. So their corpse, the corpse of this one sentient, is littered throughout the landscape, which is obviously what the Grenier are interested in. Oh. Is that a bug? What is that? If you can locate a Grenier camp, we may be able to recover the component the Ostroms require. You can see a big rendering upgrade that we've been working on for three months. View distances we've never had to do before. Perspicular rays, time of day, new water shading. What are you doing? There's one, there's one, get it. Yeah! Tim, have you forgotten the mission? There should be kill, a great camp nearby. Now there's a whole set of new resources involved in the Warframe landscapes feature. One of them is fish. Uh, so all of the things that we showed you in Cetus about the weapon crafting, uh, there's other stuff we'll show at the end as well. This creates an, a feedback loop, a positive feedback loop of you guys going, exploring this landscape, collecting resources, and uh, I, guess, I guess spear fishing now and then just because it's cool. However, because we have a large landscape now, it doesn't mean that we want to kind of go slow and, and admire the daisies. We still feel that Warframe is a game about speed and high mobility. So, Rebecca, if you don't mind.
Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> Don't die, Rebecca. You got this. This landscape is, you guys know about how Earth is working for, right? You come, it's sometimes day, sometimes night. The rendering tech and the art for this has been built to have continuous day-night cycles. You'll probably find what you're looking for here. We'll do a demonstration of that in a second. The sun is setting. Don't die, Rebecca! <laughs> Unlike anything I've seen before. Grenier troop family. Watch for reinforcements. Ha, ha, ha.